It is time for another LA Kings Fan Feedback Friday show. We will discuss more trade talk for the Kings, thoughts on Gabe Velarde, and more on this episode of Locked on LA Kings. You are Locked on Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Kings fans, welcome to another episode of Locked on LA Kings, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked on LA Kings your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. We'd love for you to leave us a positive comment on Apple Podcasts if you're a fan of the show. And we're also on YouTube. Please like and subscribe if you are enjoying this content. My name is Eddie Garcia. I'm your host of Locked on LA Kings. I've worked in sports media for the past 30 years, 20 plus years at the Fox Sports Radio Network. I'm also co-host of the Puck Podcast, a weekly NHL review show. That's been putting out content for the past 16 years and a passionate LA Kings fan for 30 years. Today's episode of Locked on LA Kings is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on NHL. And when you enter the promo code locked on NHL, they'll throw in a free custom Bird Dogs Yeti style tumbler with every order. It is time for another Kings fan feedback show. We've got lots of questions and comments for about uh, off-season deals that the LA Kings could make. And as usual, we will start with the emails. Let's get right into it. Our first email comes from Gary. He is in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and I'm about 80% sure I pronounced that correct. Um, he has emailed before. And uh, by the way, I've decided to do something that I think is mildly interesting. Anytime we get an email from an exotic location, I'm going to throw in a fun fact about that place. Uh, the name Court d'Alene, by the way, uh, was given to the Native American tribe that inhabited that area back in the late 18th or 19th century by French traders and trappers. The French word Court d'Alene means heart of an owl, not an owl, an owl, A-W-L. Uh, it apparently refers to the sharpness of the trading skills exhibited by the tribal members in their dealings with the visitors. This show is not only entertaining, but informative, maybe. Uh, so let me get to the uh, email from Gary. Uh, he says, before I get started with my second email to you, I must address something from my first email last month. I have attached a few photos, or I have I had attached a few photos in the previous email, including one of my daughters and me at the Spokane Chiefs hockey game. Unfortunately for me, you pointed out that one of my daughters had a Ducks jersey on, and basically it was my failure as a father. Uh, I felt the need to get back in your good graces, so I included a photo of my daughter who had the Ducks jersey on wearing my prized Ziggy Palfy jersey. Hopefully this makes up for my egregious error. Uh, I did see the picture, uh, Gary. Thank you very much for including that, and your daughter looks much, much better in a Ziggy Palfy jersey, in my opinion. So you have you have made up for your terrible job of re raising your child and allowing her to wear a Ducks jersey. Of course, I'm kidding. I uh, says, I just got done listening, maybe. I just got done listening to your interview with Ted Sobel. Great stories from Ted about Jack Kent Cook, et cetera. Now to my question. Uh, the Kings traded for Gavrikov, filling a glaring need the Kings had for a while to obtain and sta a stabilized left shot D-man. Uh, talk is Gavrikov is going to command in the range of six years, $36 million. Question one, would you sign him at that price range? Question two, to get that contract to work, the Kings would have to make a trade to free up some cap space. Would you trade Walker or Dursey or both with Clark and Spence waiting in the wings? Thank you for your continued uh, daily shows. I always enjoyed it. And again, that was Gary in Court d'Alene, Idaho. Now, Gary, I know you sent this email before our Thursday show, where we talked about a possible Victor Arvison trade to free up some cap space to re-sign Vladislav Gavrikov. Would I trade Sean Walker or Sean Dursey or both with Brant Clark and Jordan Spence waiting in the wings? Yes, I would. A uh, thousand times yes. Uh, the problem is that I seriously doubt Walker is going to be in demand. Uh, Dursey, perhaps. Um, but, uh, again, you're looking to clear up cap space. Um, it would do a little bit. You clear up a little bit of cap space with those two players being moved out, but not as much as you would in Arvidsson, for example. Um, as for the six years, $35 million, I do not see 
uh, Vladislav Gabrikov being a $6 million a year player. I'm not sure where you got that number from. Uh, your top line defensemen make around $9 million. Uh, that would be quite the raise for Vladislav Gabrikov. He made $2.6 million a year in his last contract. Uh, I'm thinking if they do re-sign him, something around the $4 million range per season. Uh, Mikey Anderson is getting just a touch over $4 million a year. So I and and that you know Gabrikov is a similar style defensive defenseman. So um, if if the deal is uh, six years, thirty five million dollars, the answer is no. I would not sign in for that. Um, but again, some time, something around four million dollars a year, I think, would be reasonable and would be uh, almost double what he made in his previous contract per year. Uh, Jacob Chikrin, for example, signed a six year deal worth four point six million per season after he was traded to the Ottawa Senators. So, uh, yeah, I would not, I don't, he's not going to be a $6 million a year player. I don't think if he is, if that's what he's demanding, then I think the Kings would be better off looking elsewhere. As much as I like Vladislav Gavrikov. Our next email comes from Warren Duthie. Uh, he is in parts unknown, so I get to make it up. And I'm going to say it's Warren in West Covina. He says, I am a new everydayer. Uh, love your perspective on the NHL. Uh, your take on the recent success of the Florida Panthers shows your NHL wisdom. Oh, thank you. Uh, he says, President's Trophy is winners last year to make the playoffs by a whisker this year. Uh, a couple episodes back, you asked, what have we learned from this season? One point you made in the show was that there is more than one way to be successful in the NHL. Uh, that really got me thinking about our team. This year, I was fascinated by how different the Edmonton Oilers style of play was in comparison to the LA Kings style. Top offense versus top defense. I could watch those teams go at it all year. A few years back, Tampa Bay was winning like crazy, and it almost seemed obvious that if you wanted to be successful in the NHL, you needed a small, fast team uh, with uh, geared towards a higher octane offense, uh, even if it came at the expense of defense. But that Tampa Bay team was built, uh, be, while that Tampa Bay team was being built, uh, the Kings were demonstrating you could be successful in a different brand of hockey. I remember those Kings winning with a more ground and pound, big, heavy, defensively geared brand of hockey. Eddie, as you look across the NHL, how many distinct playing styles can you see? If you had to take a guess at what Rob Blake thinks it takes to be successful, what would you guess? Well, my guess is, since I've seen the way he's kind of molded this LA Kings team, that it's more of a defense first type of a team. And that isn't a surprise considering that Rob Blake was a Hall of Fame defenseman. But I think he also realizes you have to have some skill up front as well. I think he's interested in getting more of a balanced team. Uh, certainly not uh, exactly what we saw for the Kings to Stanley Cup winning teams that you've mentioned uh, in 2012 and 2014. Maybe a model for what the LA Kings will like to be is the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, very, very solid defensively which is one reason why they've been able to have so much success despite the rotating you know, number of goalies that have come in and out of the lineup. Uh, but they also have some skilled players too to the Vegas Golden Knights, uh, guys like Mark Stone and Jack Eichel and things like that. So I, my, th my guess is that Rob Blake, again, would like to kind of build from the blue line out, but I think he wants a, a balanced team. He wants a team that can play very well defensively and a team that could score just kind of a well-rounded team uh, is what he's looking for. I can kind of a basic style. Uh, Jim and Lakewood uh, checks in. He is the biggest Jonathan Quick fan you will find. Uh, he's or one of them anyway. He says great work on the shows this week, especially the one with Ted Sobel. Really enjoy the old King stories from him and fans. One thing I was going to mention was among the issues a few nights back in Dallas, Mister Quick had to be removed from his spot in the third period because, like Montreal and other places, the backup goalie has to sit away from the bench in other locations. It's strange, but as you know, some rinks are like that. They had to move him out of there for the third period. Um, he says, aside from that, uh, good work this summer, and we love the continuity and professionalism of the content. Go Kings, go. I had some fun with Jim last week. He was a little sassy about uh, Jonathan Quick, so I got a little sassy back with him. But yeah, that is a that is a weird thing. Uh, and... and uh, there's you're right there. It's, it's weird that there are some bench areas in NHL rinks where the goalie can't sit with his teammates. Uh, I've never really quite understood that, but uh, yeah, sometimes the goalie has to kind of sit over by the Zamboni entrance all by himself, which is a little odd. Um, you would think, why not just let him go in the locker room and 
and and sit back there. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, uh, it, Dallas apparently is one of those places, which is just a little bit odd. Uh, this one comes from Tom Scully. He's in Saginaw, Michigan. Uh, and I looked it up because Saginaw, I don't know if Saginaw is an exotic location, but different than getting an email from some of our good listeners in the Southern California area. Uh, I found out that Saginaw means land of socks, but not like socks you wear on your feet. It's spelled S-A-U-K-S. I assume I'm pronouncing it correctly. I'm going to say I'm 50-50 on that. Uh, but it is a, a name of Native, Amer- Native Americans who originally lived in that area in Michigan. Uh, so Tom in Saginaw says, um, as you have alluded to, the Kings may have to move some rostered players to not only clear salary, but to also bring in some much-needed toughness. What do you think about Trevor Moore getting moved? I realize he just signed an extension, but I do feel that his game has trended down in the past season. You may wonder how I'm a Kings fan in Michigan. The Kings double-A team was here when I was a kid in the 70s and early 80s, hence how I became a Kings fan, and I have been loyal ever since. That's that's cool to know. Uh, it is. I was a little interested in how a guy in Michigan became a Kings fan, and it's uh, everybody has a story about how they became a Kings fan, so that's cool. Thank you for sharing that, Tom. Uh, as for moving Trevor Moore, I don't see that happening. Uh, as you said yourself, they just signed into an extension. Um, I think Trevor Moore is a solid blue-collar guy with some scoring touch, one of those guys that every team needs, maybe kind of a Trevor Moore type of uh, – Trevor Moore, Trevor Lewis type of a player. Um, I think I think – that Trevor Moore is uh, more of a, I just realized I, they're both Trevors. Uh, he, Trevor Moore is kind of more of a third line player like Trevor Lewis was. Um, and he did have a very solid year season before last. Yes. His numbers dropped off last season, but I'm, I'm willing to see how he does this year before I would consider looking to move on from him. We've got a few more emails to get to, but before we do that, I want to remind you today's episode of locked on LA Kings, your team every day is brought to our brought to you by our friends over at Bird Dogs. What is Bird Dogs? Well, they are shorts and also pants uh, that have underwear built in them. And that might sound kind of weird, but once you put them on, you'll realize uh, it's not weird at all because it's really, really comfortable. And they look good too. Lots of different colors to choose from. Uh, and how often does something look good and feel good? At the same time, it is the perfect combination. I have worn my bird dogs uh, to Disneyland, which I'm going to do later today. Uh, Walking around all day in them, very comfortable, and they look good too. My wife enjoys uh, when I look halfway decent, which isn't often. Uh, So she loves my bird dog shorts. Uh, So if you would like to check them out as well, I would invite you to go to birddogs.com slash locked on NHL. And when you enter the promo code locked on NHL, they will throw in a free custom bird dog yeti style tumbler with every purchase Uh, again it's birddogs.com b-i-r-d-d-o-g-s.com enter the promo code locked on nhl for your free gift they have shorts they have pants they have different shirts as well bird dogs i highly recommend them all right let's get back to some of the emails and this one comes from steve grogan he's in orlando florida now i thought could it possibly be the former New England Patriots quarterback of the same name. Alas, it is not. As uh, Steve says that he is a lifelong Kings fan, originally from L.A. Uh, His parents were season ticket holders in the 70s until we moved in 1981. Uh, He says, I wanted to comment on the offseason trade speculation you mentioned and put out there what I think and hope will happen. I think packaging Arvidsson and Peterson for a solid third pair of left defense would be extremely helpful since it doesn't look like Edler will be back. No, uh, Alexander Edler is not going to be back. Um, And there's um, debate on whether we'd want him to come back or not. Not that he, he played okay, but he is getting a bit long in the tooth. And I think it's, it's time to move on and thank him for his time as a King. Uh, He's uh, Steve continues. He says, I definitely see at least one, if not both Jersey and Walker being traded, maybe for some younger talent or picks to free up some cap space for Corpy. Uh, Thanks for the content. Keep up the great work and go Kings go. Thank you, Steve, for the email. Uh, Yeah, we've talked about it a little bit. Um, You know, people have brought up Sean Dursey and Sean Walker a lot. Um, You know, that would free up some cap space, um, but not as much as as Victor Arvidsson, uh, who would definitely be in demand. Um, Dursey could be in demand. Walker, probably not so much, to be honest with you. 
you can find a, a third pairing defenseman around the league. Uh, this next email comes from John in Long Beach. He says, Eddie, I know you have had guests uh, on your show from other Kings podcasts, Jesse Cohen, Russell Morgan. So maybe you wouldn't mind answering this question. What other Kings podcasts do you listen to? Actually, John, I don't listen to any of them unless there is a special guest interview uh, of some note that I want to check out. Like if Rob Blake goes on a podcast and has something to say, uh, maybe Mark Yanetti, who is the Kings director of amateur scouting, maybe ahead of the NHL draft to kind of hear what he says. I'd, I'd love to get him on this show. We're going to try that before the draft this year. He's usually pretty open to doing those kinds of things. So we'll see. Um, but I, I, it's And it's not a slight to any of those guys and the job that they do, but I just don't want to be, I don't want my opinions to be affected by some, somebody else's opinion. And that might sound kind of weird because I do occasionally listen to other podcasts of people who, you know, cover the entire NHL because I want to be informed on the entire league and I can't watch everything or, or, or see everything. Um, but when it comes to the Kings, I kind of want to, for better or worse, I kind of want to just focus on what I see, what I hear and give you my opinions. And I don't, I don't want to be influenced by what anyone else says. And I think if I listened to all those other podcasts, that might be the case. So um, I, I actually don't listen to any other Kings podcast unless they have a special guest that I want to hear from. Uh, Jose in San Jose says Kings fan living in Sharks territory as a media guy. I was wondering what you think about ESPN and TNT's coverage of the NHL. I know a lot of people were excited to see the NHL leave NBC sports, but I'm not sure it's any better now. Do you have a preference? Uh, I do. And look, I work for, I've worked for Fox sports. I work now for the Fox Sports Radio Network. So maybe there's some sort of a rivalry with ESPN. Um, back in my college days, if you asked me as a college kid, you can have one channel. What's it going to be? It would have been ESPN. And I would have been so happy with just that. Now I hardly ever watch ESPN. I really hate what it's turned into. Um, I don't think they do a good job with the NHL. Uh, I can't stand their in-between period coverage. Got some big names with Mark Messier and Chris Chelios. I don't think they say much of anything that's interesting. Uh, the TNT coverage, as far as I think, I do think play by play guys for both of those networks, I think do a good job. The, the game presentation, pretty much on par with each other. You know, you got good guys. You got Sean McDonough at ESPN, Ray Ferraro. You've got uh, Kenny Albert and Eddie Olchek on TNT. Those guys all do a great job. But just talking about the the in between period the pregame post game stuff i think tnt blows them out of the water and you know you get a guy like paul bissonette who had a cup of coffee in the nhl he's no big name but he says interesting things he actually tells me things that i'm like oh wow i didn't see that or focuses on different things um henrik lundquist on there does a good job talking about goalies and things like that and they have a little bit more fun it seems to me as they try and move that uh that nba tnt kind of attitude over to the nhl so to answer your question i think tnt's coverage is far superior as far as the uh, pre-game in between period post-game stuff than espn um so and you know is it any better than it was over at nbc sports uh that's up for debate you know a lot of people were excited to see the to see the nhl return to espn because espn is a brand and and all that and they do promote their products normally well although i think they've done a terrible job promoting the nhl i see more wnba promotion on their network than i do nhl but um it, it's it's not as easy to watch because it's the, you know the games aren't on espn uh the games are on espn plus which is streaming so i don't know that that's uh, necessarily better than what we had on nbc sports so anyway uh this is our final email comes from eric d he is in malaga spain and he says uh, oh i by the way fun fact on malaga spain it is the home of pablo picasso huh? how about that he says uh wanted to have your take on fanatics taking over as the official jersey provider of the nhl are you going to miss adidas are you a fan of fanatics jerseys and then he closes by saying vamos los angeles go kings go boy you can really tell my last name is garcia by the way i I pronounced that. Um, I've heard a lot of people complain about the NHL Fanatics deal. Um, but as far as am I a fan of the Fanatics jerseys, I don't know. They haven't made any yet. The deal 
on making the jerseys doesn't start until this coming season. So all the jerseys I have are uh, either Adidas or um, CCM, uh, Reebok. Uh, I think I might even have a Coho uh, jersey of all the. I have a pretty big jersey collection. I'm a jersey nerd. So I'm sorry, Eric. I can't answer whether I like the Fanatics jerseys or not because they haven't put them out yet. So we shall see. I know a lot of people are, are very down on, on Fanatics and the quality of their products. Let's get to some of your YouTube comments. Uh, we had a show on Monday that we focused on Philip Deneau of the uh, LA Kings, the Kings second line center. And Mikey J chimed in on that episode. And he said, Philip Deneau is simply the kind of guy you want on your team. He's not flashy, but he's reliable and a good guy to have around. Very much pleased with him being on the team and making the team stronger. And Mikey, like Philip Deneau, that was a short to the point reliable email or comment from you uh on the uh king's five off-season questions that i had on tuesday's show this came from doug slug uh he says this off-season will be fascinating indeed i can absolutely see blake megan copley the number one due to in part um other up-and-coming teams like buffalo overpaying but not breaking the bank and adding a capable goaltender um, with more than two-thirds of the league pressed for cap space, I just don't see L.A. unloading Peterson on any team without adding significant sweetness in the trade. Uh, I just do not believe Blake will do that, I and he will keep any tradable assets to potential add-in seasons uh, in, the 2020, in 2024. Uh, that leaves the option of either trying to squeeze as much value uh, in utilizing Peterson to play with Copley or them outright releasing him to waivers again to give another go uh, in Ontario to salvage his career. Jersey and or Walker need to be traded as well, not only for their um, for, for the emergence of Brant Clark, but also for the needed cap space, both to try and retain Gavrikov and to also add a lower price third pairing left shot defenseman to help with the PK. There's more of a glut on the right side D than at forward, and these options should be explored before taking the risk of having to trade an Arvidsson, Ayafalo, or even Trevor Moore. Uh, those three forwards are going to be in an integral part of maintaining scoring depth, sound possessions, and five-on-five -five play and should be kept until it can be determined whether Byfield and Kupari pan out. Their make-or-break time is 2024 and will be rightfully scrutinized in the first 30 games of the season. So uh, uh, some good stuff there from Doug the Slug. Uh, and Dr. Bob, 512, also chiming in on that five questions uh, episode that I had. He says, my opinion is that neither Gavi or Corpy, Corpy will be re-signed. Think the Kings do a low cost, below $3 million average annual value for a goalie. A uh, young player to improve the most will be QB as the third line center with Fiala and Velarde on the wings with him. Uh, I would like to see Jersey Walker and more traded, but probably it will be Arbison or Iafalo instead of more. Trent Yanni should have been replaced for our penalty kill. Big mistake by Blake. Uh, on the possible Victor Arvidsson trade to resign Vladislav Gavrikov, we had this from Dave Young. He says, I would rather have Arvidsson uh, over Gavrikov. Gavrikov is going to want a pile of money and a lengthy contract, and I don't think he is worth it. But if you can sign him some way without taking away a player like Victor, well, then why not? But Arvidsson was a spark plug and an energy boost player with whoever he played with. Uh, no way I would let him go, but who knows, come, come the trade deadline, if we can renew his contract, then maybe, but now, no way. Uh, this from Frank in, our, in Rancho's Palos Verdes. He says, I thought that Velarde had at least second line potential uh, in his very first outing. Uh, just has to avoid injuries, which so far has not happened. I still believe that if the Kings are going to have success in the near term, Velarde will have to be a big part of that. As far as Arvidsson goes, I would not move him. I'd look to for another way to get Gavrikov signed. Maybe Jersey and Walker could be moved, or Peterson with a Turcotte or Byfield sweetener attached for swallowing that huge salary. If you all on the second line, we'd be good with Deneau and Arvidsson. Uh, maybe try more or I follow on the first line with Kupari and Velarde on the third line. I also agree that Kaliev needs to have a bigger opportunity to show what he may be able to do. Uh, so we've, we've kind of talked about this before, but the Arvidsson frees up more cap space if that's what you're looking to do. He makes $4.2 million a year. Jersey's making $1.7 uh, And guys like Turcotte and Walker at this point just don't have much value. And Byfield's not going anywhere. 
Um, our next uh, comment, uh, actually, that's it. That's all we have for the comments. I, I've run out of runway here, and uh, we, have, we have gotten to the end of our comments. But I do need to remind you that the NBA Finals are almost set, and uh, we've got the Denver Nuggets awaiting the winner of the Celtics Heat Series, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's a bonus bet back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It is safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to points scored to three-pointers made. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay. So don't miss your chance to get in on your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. Hey, also don't forget that uh, time is running out to vote for LA Kings mascot Bailey for the Mascot Hall of Fame. Voting ends uh, this Saturday at midnight. So go and uh, and hook up my good friend Bailey for the Mascot Hall of Fame. Uh, the, the address to go check it out is uh, mascothalloffame.com and you can cast your vote for Bailey, the LA Kings mascot. For the Hall of Fame, again, the voting ends Saturday at midnight. So if you got a second, Go over there and help out the Kings mascot. Try and get into the mascot Hall of Fame. For you everydayers, those of you that listen and watch every day, uh, coming up next week, we are going to have a show on Memorial Day. Uh, so hopefully you're you're cool with that. Um, we're going to break down LA Kings goalie Phoenix Copley. Uh, we're also going to recap the action from over the weekend at the World Championships with a couple LA Kings still alive over there for Team USA. Uh, we're going to have uh, another special guest, of course, next week. And I think it's time we have another random Kings fan interview. We had done one of those before. I thought it went pretty well. I've got somebody in mind that I think you're going to enjoy. So I think we're going to try and do that this week, a random Kings fan interview uh, as this week's special guest. Uh, we're going to have another Kings feature. And since he's been talked about a lot as far as some trade speculation, uh, let's talk about Victor Arvidsson next week um try and come up with some sort of special feature for next week as well and of course we'll cap it all off next friday with another kings fan feedback show thank you all very very much for all of you who took the time to send me an email really appreciate it obviously this show is not possible without you taking the time to do that and all of you that commented on the youtube episodes as well i read every comment i didn't pick every comment to read on the show but uh, I really appreciate all the comments that you guys make on the YouTube episodes as well. So thank you very much for that. Uh, the email address, you can send an email at any time for the fan feedback show. Uh, as always, it is locked on Eddie at gmail.com. E D D I E locked on Eddie at gmail.com. Also love for you to stay connected with the show while we're not doing shows over the weekend. Uh, we're on Twitter and Instagram at locked on la kings if there's any breaking news involving the kings always retweet it over there let you know what's going on with the la kings i'm eddie garcia thank you for listening and watching this episode of locked on la kings part of the locked on podcast network have a great memorial day weekend we will talk to you on monday and as always go kings go